Good morning everyone and a very happy Christmas to you all. Now unfortunately we are not able to have our usual Christmas Day family service this year due to the coronavirus restrictions. But I am glad that you are able to listen in to this Christmas Day message. In Galatians uh, chapter 4 and verses 4 and 5 we find our call to worship this morning and here's what it says but when the fullness of time had come God sent forth his son born of a woman born under the law to redeem those who were under the law so that we might receive adoption as sons here is the wonder of the incarnation of God sending forth his son at just the right time so that we could become part of God's family again. That we could be forgiven, redeemed, adopted into God's family with all the blessings of children of God. And so it is with great joy and rejoicing that we gather together on this Christmas Day to worship God. We're going to turn to our opening hymn just now, which uh, is being played for us by Ashley, our organist in Santos. O come, all ye faithful, joyful and triumphant. And that's really the theme of our short little service this morning joy. O oh, come all ye faithful, joyful and triumphant.
And now, uh, boys and girls, I wonder, boys and girls, did you receive some special gifts this morning under the Christmas tree? I wonder, did you receive perhaps some lovely toys or, or games or perhaps some beautiful new clothes to wear? I hope you did. And I really missed this morning the chance to go around and to see what you have received from Santa this year. But maybe I'll have a chance to see some of those lovely things another time. But I want to say this. I hope that your gifts, whatever your gift is, I hope your gifts bring you lots and lots of joy. You see, joy is one of the things that Christmas is all about boys and girls. God uh, gave us his son, the Lord Jesus. He was born in Bethlehem long, long ago. The shepherds, they were the first to hear the good news and they, they were afraid, but the angel said to them, Behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David, a saviour who is Christ the Lord. Luke's Gospel chapter 2 verses 10 and 11. What wonderful good news boys and girls. The birth of Jesus was good news that brought great joy. It brought joy. Why? Because Jesus is the saviour that we all need to take away our sin. Our sin makes God sad. Now perhaps we think that we don't really sin all that much and there's a story going around that there's no naughty list this year and so we don't need to worry but you know we have all said and done things that displease God. Perhaps we have been naughty in some way or another. Perhaps we have told a little lie that we didn't think was all that serious. Perhaps we have said bad things or hurtful things to others. And not obeying our parents, not doing what our parents tell us to do. All these things are naughty, if you like, and they are sinful before God. Our sin, as I said, makes God sad and it keeps us away from God. Our sins need to be forgiven and taken away so that we can have real joy in our hearts and in our lives again. And only Jesus can do that, boys and girls. And that's why, that's why God sent him down from heaven to earth to us. He wants us to believe in Jesus and trust in him to take away our sin and make us friends with God again. If we do, God will fill our hearts with joy and contentment. Here's what it says in the Psalms, in Psalm 16 verse 11. You make known to me the path of life. In your presence is fullness of of joy. God in the Bible shows us the pathway that he wants us to live that will bring us one day to be in his presence in heaven and we can experience his presence even now when we pray and when we listen to God's word and when we learn from God's word in Sunday school and in other places. He wants to make known to us the path of life the path that will lead to God's presence in heaven where there is fullness of joy, where there's nothing but real, wonderful, special joy. And I want you, boys and girls, every single one of you, to experience that joy in your hearts and in your lives. Thank you very much for listening, boys and girls. Now we're going to read from uh, Luke's Gospel. Let us read from Luke's Gospel, chapter 2. And beginning to read at verse 8. 
reading verses 8 through to verse 17. And in the same region there were shepherds out in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were filled with great fear. And the angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Saviour, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling cloths and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among those with whom he is pleased. When the angels went away from them into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go over to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. And they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in a manger. And when they saw it, they made known the saying that had been told them concerning this child. Amen. Finishing at verse 17, we thank God for his word and we want to spend a few minutes now just thinking uh, about what we read in that passage and especially in verses 10 and 11 that we mentioned with the boys and girls just earlier. But today we gather, it's a day of rejoicing. Joy to the world, the Lord has come, our closing hymn says. What is this joy? Jesus has been born. Mary and Joseph obtained shelter in a, a, a cattle shed and there Mary gave birth to her child, a saviour, who is Christ the Lord. Let's never forget who this child was, a saviour, Christ the Lord. The news of this special and amazing event was proclaimed by an angel to the shepherds in the field. They were afraid, we're told, when this happened but the angel cast out their fears by saying to them not to fear you see god is able to dispel our fears just the same as he dispelled the shepherd's fears and that's something wonderful for us dear folks today isn't it the birth of jesus christ as we noticed last sunday is something that can take away our fears but the birth, as we want to notice now, the birth of Jesus was also a cause of great joy. I bring you good news of great joy. And so we think of this birth of joy. The shepherds, as we noticed, were afraid, but really they had nothing to fear because the message of the angel was one of good news and of great joy. And we sing about this all the time, don't we? You know, our carols, well, some carols are, are not 100% theologically correct. But most of our carols are filled with wonderful sound theology. And we're going to mention a number of these carols today as we think about the joy that comes to us through the birth of the Lord Jesus. As I said, our closing him says joy to the world the lord has come again and hark the herald angels sing there's a line that says joyful all ye nations rise join the triumph of the skies and in sea in yonder manger low it says this say ye holy shepherds say what your joyful news today and of course we have, O oh, come all ye faithful, joyful and triumphant. And then another one, good Christian men rejoice. And in this it says, now, hear, now ye hear of endless bliss, joy, joy, Christ was born for this. And so we see the birth of Jesus is a cause of great joy. It was good news 
of great joy. Why all this joy about the birth of Jesus? Oh, because the Saviour has been born. Hail thou ever blessed morn. Hail redemption's happy dawn. Sing through all Jerusalem. Christ is born in Bethlehem. So goes the refrain of seeing yonder manger low. Christ is born in Bethlehem. That's what this season is all about. And so there is joy because a saviour has been born. But it's also good news and a cause of joy because Christ is Lord. Yes, Christ is Lord. We're told in verse 11 that the one who is born is Christ the Lord. And there is no doubt, therefore, as to who this baby is who was born in Bethlehem and laid in a manger. He is Christ, God's promised one, the Messiah. And he is Lord. Again, the carols emphasise this for us, don't they? For the child so dear and gentle is our Lord in heaven above. Once in Royal David's city. And again in that carol it says, He came down to earth from heaven, who is God and Lord of all. Cause for joy indeed. But is he Lord? Is he Lord in our church, I wonder? Is he really Lord in your life? Have you surrendered your life to him? Have you surrendered your will to him? Your thinking and your decision-making processes, are they subject to his will? And everything that you say and think and do, do you always want to please and honour him? If he is Lord in your life, you will. You see, he's not just a little baby that we can cuddle and coo at, is he? He is God and Lord of all. Why did he come down from heaven to earth to us? Well, the hymn I love to hear the story answers this question, doesn't it? In verse 1. For I am both weak and sinful, but this I surely know. The Lord came down to save me because he loved me so. What love did God have for us that he sent his son down to save us from our sins? Come to him, trust him and be saved from all your sin and experience his joy, which is a an unending joy, a joy that never leaves us. One other thing I want to notice, this appearance to the shepherds was really the beginning of evangelism. Again, just look at verse 10. And the angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all people. Why is it for all people? Because all the people in the world need a saviour. And why do we all need a saviour? Because we have all sinned and come short of the glory of God. But herein is the good news of Christmas. Jesus came down to save us from our sins, to die in our place. God commends his love toward us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Oh, marvellous marvellous thing Christ died for us that we could be forgiven and he is available to all who will call upon his name the actions of the shepherds then in light of what they've heard we should note that they decided to go to Bethlehem verse 15 tells us and see for themselves if this was true what the angel had told them they made haste and they went they didn't delay Folks, we should always haste to Jesus, especially when we hear his voice, when we hear his voice saying, come unto me. We should haste to him and we'll not be disappointed 
We'll find all that he tells us and all that he promises us to be true just as they did. They found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger just as they had been told. Verse 16. But what did they do next? We're told they made it widely known what had been told them concerning this child. That he was a saviour who is Christ the Lord. Oh, folks, this is the good news. This is the best news ever. That Jesus is a saviour who is Christ the Lord. He wants to save us from our sins. And he wants to be Lord in our lives. And we too, like the shepherds, you know, we have a duty. We are to go with the good news and tell it to others wherever we go as well. We're not just to, to sit back and, and soak in God's word and, and feel the blessing of God's word in our own lives. But we are to tell others this good news of great joy. In Isaiah 12 and 3 it says, Therefore with joy you will draw water from the wells of of salvation. God wants us to draw water from the wells of salvation. He wants us to be filled with that joy. So come to Jesus. Come this Christmas day with your sins and your fears and trust in him to save you that your joy may be full. And then go and tell others that their joy may be full as well. Amen. Now let's join together and, and sing our closing hymn. Joy to the world, the Lord has come. This will be played for us by Alison. the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing so that by the power of the Holy Spirit you may overflow in hope through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And again may I wish you all a very happy Christmas and I look forward to seeing you on Sunday.